right, you were just tuned in to DJ Antonio Caesar, and it is time to get started for the official event. And to get started, I would like to pass it to Reverend Brian Sauter, Executive Director of Faith in Place, to kick it off. Thank you. Hey, DJ Antonio Caesar, moving from a bright, sunshiny day into follow me, which reminds me, if you haven't already, go on to social media, media and follow at DJ Antonio Caesar on all the social media platforms. Big shout out to you, DJ, also our youth coordinator at Faith in Place. As DJ Antonio Caesar said, my name is Brian Souter, and I am the executive director of Faith in Place. And I would like to welcome you to our annual celebration and fundraiser, A Legacy of Healing. Now, as people of diverse faith and spirituality, we are grounded in healing. Tonight, we honor the ways that we as a community have advanced our mission of caring for one another and our shared common home. Our event tonight has Spanish interpretation available, and I'd like to welcome at this time our Lake County Outreach Support staff, Carla, to say a few words of explanation. Carla? Thank you, Brian. Buenas noches. Esta noche vamos a tener interpretación disponible en español. Nuestro intérprete ya está en el audio de español. Si ocupan esto, pueden ir al fondo de su pantalla donde dice interpretation. Y se mira como un globo. Y después elige Spanish o español y así van a escuchar nuestro programa en español. Si tienen un problema, pueden utilizar el chat y mandarnos un mensaje y así lo podemos ayudar. Pero muchas gracias. And back to you, Brian. Thank you so much, Carla. Uh, Faith in Place is made up of a network of people of diverse spiritualities from all over the country. And I want to give particular attention to those of you from our various regions, from Southern Illinois to Central Illinois, to Chicago, the North and West suburbs of Chicago, Lake County, and from those of you from cities, not only all across Illinois, but all over the country and the globe. So this is the time where I would invite you to please take a second to say hello in the chat. If you haven't already, let us know where you're from tonight. And maybe if you're on a green team, say that too. We celebrate green teams here at Faith in Place. Or maybe you're an elected official or a clergy member, or maybe you're on the Faith in Place board or a Faith in Place staff member. Don't be shy. Introduce yourself in the chat and say hello. Take a moment to look at the screen and gallery view and see all the beautiful, wonderful faces, our community of Faith in Place that have gathered this evening. We are community and each of you are welcome here. Tonight, we will specifically be honoring Veronica Kyle, who has shaped and led Faith in Place's outreach and programs for over 13 years. Throughout our program tonight, you'll get to see the legacy of Veronica, which is the legacy of Faith in Place, and how the impact of her leadership has shaped our vision and our community together. We will be moving from the early days to the present, and as we shape the vision going forward. At the end of tonight's program, we will get to hear directly from Veronica. Veronica, we're looking forward to hearing from you. So stay tuned all the way to the end of the program for this special unscripted moment with our very own Veronica Kyle. Now at the beginning of the program here, I do want to acknowledge that tonight is a celebration and a fundraiser. And I know all the stories that we're gonna to tell to you over the next hour will inspire you to give generously but if by chance you need to step away from the Zoom room at any time early, you can give early as well before you leave. And you can give at any time throughout the evening as you feel inspired at the link that is provided for you in the chat at this moment. We will share more in the evening, but I'm excited to preview for you that 10% of all the donations given tonight, when you give a donation, 10% of that donation will go into seeding the Veronica Kyle Eco Ambassador Scholarship Fund, which will support the youth that have gone through the high school Faith in Place Youth Program to pursue environmental majors or minors in college. So as you make your plans to give tonight, please consider giving even 10% more to help seed this important fund in honor of Veronica Kyle. All right, with all that, deep breath everyone, and please join me in welcoming to the stage Faith in Place's board chair, Karen Lewis, to provide our opening land acknowledgement. Karen. Thank you, Brian. I'm so happy to be on this stage with you and so many other people. And I'm grateful for the opportunity to honor the ancestral heritage of the land many of us are on tonight. This land acknowledgement recognizes native people from the Illinois area. 
But if you are joining from elsewhere, please see the resources linked in the chat to learn about the native communities on whose land your home resides. There's also a resources page for further information that I encourage everyone to reflect on and share. Now, as we gather in this virtual space, we are connected to one another through the winds that blow air into our lungs and the waters that move deep into the earth and up into the sky. We acknowledge the ground beneath our feet is historically the home of indigenous peoples, many of whom were forced to leave for other lands. These are the names of the peoples who were the first to live, celebrate, and lament upon the land where we now sit. The Peoria, the Kaskaskia, Miami, Maskutin, Meskwaki, Odawa, Piankasha, Weya, Sauk, Potawatomi, Kikapu, Ojibwe, and Chikasha nations. These lands carry the story of these native nations and their struggles for survival and identity. This acknowledgement from faith and place demonstrates our commitment to dismantle the ongoing legacies of settler colonialism and work with these native nations still present among us. Our aim is to become a vibrant, inclusive community with an environmental justice at our core. May we also remember that indigenous peoples are not a people of the past, but are here with us now. If there are indigenous people present tonight, we invite you and welcome you to share your tribe in the chat so that we may pause and recognize you. And now I am delighted to introduce Faith and Places Development Coordinator, Michelle Liu. Good evening, everyone. My name is Michelle Liu, and I'm a development coordinator at Faith and Place, as Karen said. Thank you all for joining us tonight. We have a really special program planned for you all, including a few surprises, so be sure to stay tuned until the end. And now it is time for us to journey both across the state and through the past 13 years at Faith and Place. Veronica Kyle was the catalyst for many programs and initiatives, and we'll explore how and why she began programs and see where they are today, starting with advocacy. 2021 was an exciting year for environmental legislation, so let's go back to where the whole story began. Good evening. I'm Pastor Scott Onfley, Policy Director at Faith in Place. Faith in Place's advocacy efforts began under the leadership of Veronica Kyle. Veronica's passion for connecting people with the legislative process was born out of a difficult moment. A legislator told her that they did not think people of color were interested in environmental issues. They stated that people of color wouldn't put in the time to rally, lobby, and advocate for change. Veronica pushed back knowing firsthand how wrong this idea was. But the legislator didn't believe her. So in true Veronica style, she replied, I'll show you. And thus, our first advocacy day was born. Veronica, uh, Claire Butterfield, and two others got in a car and drove to Springfield to meet with legislators. At that time, Veronica told Claire, we're going to bring busloads of advocates the next time. And we did. We went from four people in the car to buses with over 700 people at Advocacy Day. Faith in Place is now a recognized name in the advocacy community. We educate people about the legislative process and provide opportunity for their voices to be heard. Like why Prairie State? Why do we need to keep Prairie State open? The biggest polluter in the state of Illinois. Why will we keep Prairie State open? The second, the seventh, biggest polluter in the country. For Faith in Place, advocacy is an important tool for healing. Systemic racism has created a political landscape that only protects certain communities while leaving others vulnerable to climate change, pollution, divestment, and the lack of healthy food. Together under the leadership of Veronica, Faith in Place is making sure everyone has a seat at the table and everyone's voice 
is heard. I'm Cindy Shepard, Central Illinois Outreach Director. And a few months ago, I found myself on the plaza in front of my state senator's office with a hundred other passionate climate activists. We were so ready for a change. We had brought chants and speakers and a pack of while you were out memos to stick on his door. We left with a hundred stuck to the door saying things like, while you were out, coal plants continued polluting our communities. We were excited because we could sense that change was in the air and it was a change that had been three years in coming while Faith oh. in Place worked nonstop to pass the Climate and Equitable Jobs Act. In partnership with the Clean Jobs Coalition, people of faith navigated the political system so that their voices could be heard, especially those who are often not given a voice. CJA was the only energy bill developed by listening to understand how communities wanted the transition to go to clean, renewable energy. We met with folks in church basements and public libraries and coffee shops, and those people helped shape a bill full of great ideas and high hopes for the future. Then we presented it in Springfield over and over and over again. At first, we took busloads of high school students and church ladies and ministers to Springfield, and then we pivoted to virtual realities with COVID and Zoom office visits with our legislators. It was tiring at times, but the energy at that rally really got us connected and encouraged. And just a few weeks later, when the time came to vote, CJA needed 36 votes and it got 37 including the senator that we had lobbied so hard. And Faith in Place is so proud to have played a leading role in passing the most equitable climate-focused jobs bill in the country, the Climate and Equitable Jobs Act. Building healthier communities is part of Faith in Place's mission and health requires systems, food systems, energy systems, economic systems with fairness, with justice at their core. When we advocate and act for equity, we heal the systemic racism that causes environmental injustice. And with laws like CJO, we address the climate crisis and invest in communities that are historically overlooked. Thank you to each one of you who joined us by signing a petition or educating your house of worship or joining us on lobby day or at that great rally. Your voice made a difference and we are honored to partner with you. The Eco Ambassador Program has a ritual that we do. This ritual is called a shout out circle. We do shout out circles so that we can shout out extraordinary people in our circle. They can be an eco ambassador, our earth allies, or even our staff. And we want to do a shout out circle for Veronica Kyle to celebrate her for her retirement. Hey y'all, it's your girl Kim, and I want to give a shout out to the one and only Veronica Kyle. Veronica, I am so grateful for all the love lessons and opportunities that you have given me over these past couple of years of working with the summer program at Faith in Place. I'm so grateful for you. I'm so grateful for the lesson. I'm so grateful for the love. And I pray that as you retire, you rest well. This is a special shout out to Miss Veronica Kyle. Thank you so much for always being an example and pillar of excellence within Faith in Place and giving so much of yourself to a program that's given so much to the youth, such as myself and the generations after me. We appreciate being able to learn from you and take from your experiences over all the years that you've been with us. And we appreciate you contributing so much to the program once again, because it's changed a lot of people's lives and it's helped a lot of youth grow as individuals and professionally. So thank you for being such a huge part of the program, such a huge part of so many youth's lives. We appreciate you. Thank you so much. Hello, my name is Jalen. Um, and I would like to give out a, a shout out to Veronica Kyle for making me appreciate my community and the environment that I'm in for making me realize that my brown skin is something to be proud of and making sure that I represent my community because it is not enough representation as it is. Um, I appreciate her for making me understand that 
the environment and my voice is important to announce what I believe what should be just for the environment. Hi, I'm Sydney Guillory. I've been working with Faith in Place since 2016 and I want to give a shout out to Veronica Kyle. Veronica, thank you for being such an amazing leader and influence and always showing how much you value every member of the Faith in Place team. Thanks. Hi, I'm Dan Huncha, North and West Suburbs Outreach Director. Some of the boldest, most creative environmental leaders in the world are you. We are honored to work with these impressive voices through Faith in Place's Eco Ambassador Program. This program teaches youth 14 to 18 years of age to become environmental justice leaders. Veronica Kyle noticed a void when doing research to African American congregations on the south and west sides of Chicago. Veronica worked with our co-founder, Claire Butterfield, to raise funds to empower youth with career opportunities, leadership skills, and exposure to environmental justice. And our visionary youth program was born. We hosted our first program welcoming teams from one house of worship. In our gardening program, the youth came early, stayed late, and planted extra greenery and never missed a session. They took field trips to see urban agriculture, rooftop and butterfly gardens, and more. At first, it was viewed as a one-time grant-funded program, but it grew into an essential annual program that youth and their communities look forward to. From fashion shows at the thrift store to creating a healthy eating cookbook, this program is extremely engaging. The Eco Ambassadors learn to amplify their voices with lawmakers when they travel to Springfield to advocate for the environment. I was excited when Countryside Church UU in Palatine asked, hey, can we get youth in the north and west suburbs involved? With their generosity, we expanded the program to my area. The program's growth didn't stop there. We expanded to Lake County and later Central Illinois. We now have youth eco ambassadors in four regions. This has healing ripple effects throughout communities too. One of the biggest reasons a family makes positive changes in their home, such as starting to compost or shrink their carbon footprint, is because a young person becomes interested in it first. Youth are drivers of change. Thank you for your support of this life-changing program. I'm Cesar Almeida, the Youth Program Coordinator at Faith in Place. I'm excited about how much our Faith in Place Eco Ambassador Program is impacting and changing the lives of youth in our community. Veronica Kyle hired me to oversee the Chicago Summer Program over two years ago. I taught a creative environmental curriculum and worked to inspire youth with new concepts and career ideas from guest speakers. After my first summer coordinating the program, I was asked to return and run the program in 2020. Little did we know the challenges that would lie ahead. Due to the pandemic, we had to very creatively make the program completely virtual. I incorporated new interactive and healing practices and worked to maintain our program's high energy while honoring the challenges everyone was experiencing. 2020 also brought exciting news for Faith in Place as we received funding to expand the Eco Ambassador Program into a year-round program. Years ago, our program began as a passion project, and now it's a whole operation. The summer program is an introduction to environmental justice and climate change, featuring workshops and site visits. Students from the summer program apply to the academic year program and propose their own environmental action projects. They do not just do research, they also really engage with local communities, help build urban farms, and help preserve our environment. Where we at? What's going on right now? Right now, we are at Miss Veronica Cow's house in her garden backyard, and we are making our own pots. Come get close up on these pots, Caesar. Come, come give them a look. Come give them a look. Huh? 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 What type of pots? What kind of pots are these, family? What kind of pots? What type are these? of plants, though? These are milkweed plants, guys. 
Do you want to know what this means? This means that the monarch butterflies are going to come and lay their eggs on these, okay? Ooh, are y'all ready? Are y'all ready? These pots are lit. With the year-round nature of our program, we can also create long-term partnerships with other organizations, which is a really key component in our program. Change doesn't happen overnight. It takes time. It's important to note that our Eco Ambassador program does more than just equip youth with environmental knowledge. One way we support youth holistically is by providing resources during the college application process. Many of our Eco Ambassadors want to go to college or begin a career in environmental studies, and we connect them to the resources, people, and support needed to make it happen. The Eco Ambassador program also provided healing opportunities over the past year. Our program was an outlet for them to express what they were going through. We had a lot of check-ins and conversations, which allowed space for Eco Ambassadors to authentically share the reality of their situations. The Eco Ambassador program also helps stop the ways society can marginalize the voices of youth. The program redefines the concept of how learning happens and who holds knowledge. The skills and powers that each Eco Ambassador possesses are celebrated and amplified. For example, we are celebrating one Eco Ambassador who recently accepted a job at the Brushwood Center at Ryerson Woods in Lake County. Thank you to you all for making all the stories like this possible and believing in our young leaders. Wow, what an amazing year it's been for Caesar and our incredible Eco Ambassadors. I'm Liz Ferguson in the Development Department at Faith in Place. Soon in this program tonight, you will learn about a brand new opportunity to support eco ambassadors who go on to higher education in an environmental field. 10% of all non-pledged donations given today will support our new eco ambassador scholarship. More to come on that. Faith in Place needs your support to continue the programs you are hearing about tonight and to create many more in the future. Please take a moment any time during the program to go to the link in the chat to make a donation to Faith in Place. Now, we will hear from not one, but two remarkable women named Veronica, who will tell us about our fascinating Migration and Me program. Greetings. I'm Reverend Veronica Johnson, Faith in Place's new Outreach Director. Another Veronica who you may know, Veronica Kyle, started our Migration and Me program in 2009. I created it when I started learning about the monarch coming from Muchacan, Mexico on his journey to Nova Scotia. And then it would be fourth generation monarch going back to Mexico. For Veronica, the program was born out of frustration at the conservation table. Environmentalists were saying they, meaning people of color, aren't concerned about conservation. They aren't motivated to take on stewardship in parks and preserves. Many people of color have a bittersweet relationship with engaging in nature due to their long history of being forced to come to the United States to work the land or having their own land being stolen away. Communities of color also have less access to nature. Veronica saw an opportunity to heal this complicated past through the immigration story of the monarch butterfly. Well, I said, what are they migrating for? Well, they're getting out of the habitat and they're moving to Nova Scotia. And on the way, they need to find their host plants, milkweed. So I said, let me make this story make cultural sense so people could know that we have a responsibility to host this insect, this beautiful creature. If we don't plant that, they don't eat, they don't live. Just like the monarch butterfly looks for milkweed and plants to pollinate, like a welcome sign and nutrition, people who migrate also need to be welcomed to find a safe new home with support and sustenance. Migration in Me inspires people of all backgrounds to find ways to heal from their own stories, connect with the outdoors, and care for the natural world. It has a rich tradition of embodying hospitality, 
So everyone's story is welcome and honored. Hello, my name is Carla Aldana, the Lake County Outreach Support. I'm Candace May, Lake County Outreach Coordinator for Faith in Place. The Migration in Me program, as Veronica Johnson said, teaches that everyone has their own powerful migration story. Honoring these stories helps us understand who we are, heals generational wounds, and connects us with others and the world around us. Through events like Monarch Festivals or our Double Dutch Festival this year, we welcome others into outdoor spaces to enjoy nature and connect with neighbors over healthy games and activities. The Migration and Me program teaches us to be curious about nature and the stories of animals and our land. Honoring these stories helps us heal the challenges we face ranging from climate change to the decline of bees. One powerful migration story parallel is between our personal journey and that of the monarch butterfly. This year, in Lake County, we expanded the program to also include other animals that hibernate and migrate in Illinois and describe how climate change is impacting migrational patterns around the world. We are also combining migration and me with our sharing circle practices and turning this combination into a new program for our youth. This is especially important as climate change increases the number of migrants traveling across the world. We will have more stories to welcome and more people to listen to. People can reflect on their own migration stories, learn about community members, both human and animal, and get to know each other. Thank you to everyone who participated in our Migration and Youth program this year. Whether you jumped rope at our Double Dutch Festival or plan to milkweed with us, escaping to nature has a recharging and healing effect. Your story matters, and we are honored you shared it with us. Hello, and good evening. Candace here again. Veronica is an avid reader of inspirational and environmental literature, and she graciously shares enlightening content with us at Faith in Place. In tribute to Veronica, I will share a poem by Audre Lorde that is near and dear to Veronica's heart. Veronica, like Audre Lorde, reminds us of the healing power of using our individual and collective voice to combat injustice. Now, by Audre Lorde. Woman power is black power, is human power, is always feeling my heart beat. As my eyes open, as my hands move, as my mouth speaks, I am. Are you ready? Thank you. Now, Samantha, who will share about our award-winning green team model. Thank you. Hello, I'm Samantha Miller, energy and climate change support and green team coach. Our award-winning green team model is yet another transformational idea that Veronica Kyle gifted to Faith in Place. Green teams are groups of three or more people from a house of worship who provide cooperative leadership to educate, connect, and advocate for healthier communities. When Veronica originally started the program, Faith in Place worked with a dozen green teams. We now coach hundreds of green teams from all religious backgrounds, including Jewish, Muslim, Hindu, Baha'i, and Buddhist faiths. Green teams continue to be the bedrock of Faith in Place. We can't do our environmental work without our green team members. Most staff members have taken on the role of being a green team coach. I personally coach 16 green teams. A coach motivates their teams and provides new programs and opportunities on a regular basis. I personally like to teach others about water preservation because most people do not know that there is no new water on earth. The water we have is the same water we've always had here and we need to preserve it. Adding a green team to your house of worship brings with it a healing effect. 
both for the environment or, and for communities. Green teams do everything from reducing energy use to hosting racial healing circles with their community. Green teams also experience the joy of collaborating, being outside, talking in nature, cleaning up neighborhoods, and working in gardens. This movement is good for the body, of course, but it also supports emotional healing, especially after the challenges of the past year and a half. We are so grateful for all the Green Team members that bring healing to their faith communities and the world around them. I'm Wade Halva, Southern Illinois Outreach Coordinator, and I'm also the pastor of First Presbyterian Church in Marion. My church has had a green team since before I joined Faith in Place. When I started working here, wow, I was amazed at how many ways green teams are empowered to work on environmental issues and at the wide array of programming available to them. Many green teams work to plant, grow, and sustain different types of gardens. This year I worked with green teams on two types of amazing projects, a pollinator garden and a produce garden. Carbondale Unitarian Fellowship created a pollinator garden on over one acre of land in the prairie and native restoration model. It's now the home for plants, flowers, butterflies, and nesting animals. The garden is right next to a city park and has a truly natural and healing presence that people wouldn't otherwise see in that area. At my church, we planted a teaching garden with the University of Illinois Extension that you can see beside me. We will be planting fruit trees and teaching people how to prune them. And it's a strong partnership between our church, the city, community <laughs> groups, retail store staff, and several other houses of worship. We went from bare ground in the spring to 300 pounds of produce harvested and donated to the Salvation Army Food Pantry. As you can see, we have raised bed gardens and we tried to build it so that it would be accessible to all. As everyone knows, during the last 19 months of COVID, nothing has been normal. But there is something very healing about being able to walk in a garden and watch it grow and flourish. I know firsthand that having a green team at your house of worship can be a huge source of healing as it provides multiple opportunities to reach out to others and start conversations. A green team can flip the model from scarcity to abundance, from it's not possible to anything is possible. Positive thinking is a real gift of healing that green teams provide. Good evening, everyone. I'm Ginny Judd, Faith and Places Operations and Finance Director. As a gardener who's passionate about sustainable food systems, I'm thrilled to share with you an exciting update from our team. As many of you may know, last year, in partnership with the Chicago Region Food System Fund, Faith in Place granted Houses of Worship and community-supported agriculture farms in Illinois $200,000 to support their work, ensuring no one in their community went hungry during the pandemic. From creating local gardens to supporting food pantries and CSA farms, it was incredible to see the ways this funding supported the work our faith community was doing. This year, the Chicago Region Food System Fund has made it possible for us to again support organization, including Houses of Worship, CSA Farms, and other faith-based nonprofits who are engaging in projects that support longer-term impacts to the food system and that increase community access to sustainable local food. This time, we will grant $7,000 each to 25 recipients who are working to build a more sustainable food system. And yes, last year's recipients are eligible to re receive funding again. We will be sending out more information, including an invitation to an informational webinar available in English and in Spanish that will review the application process and more in the coming weeks. So please stay tuned. And now I'm happy to turn the floor over to Katie Maxwell, who will kick off our next segment on the power of storytelling. Katie. I'm Katie Maxwell, Communications Coordinator. Over the past 22 years, 
Faith in Place has built a tradition of powerful storytelling. Veronica Kyle herself is a master storyteller who uses stories to repair dignity, to connect us to one another, and to heal. Veronica welcomes us into her past, her childhood in Alabama, to her years in South Africa and the Caribbean. Her stories teach us with wisdom from all over the world. They make us more passionate about justice and gentler and more compassionate with ourselves. At Faith in Place, we utilize the power of stories to welcome people and help them find a connecting point, a door through which they see their own story and our work caring for the earth and each other. Veronica started many of our programs and created curricula rooted in storytelling. Our Migration and Me story circles, porch stories, just eating curricula, and racial healing circles all connect us to one another through stories. Story-based programs also help us heal. They provide protected space for sharing and listening to other stories. They help us connect to our migration journeys, facilitate racial healing by breaking down the barriers of systemic racism, and welcome us into different worlds where our minds can expand beyond our own experiences and see the world with empathy and compassion. Veronica's powerful storytelling and expertise in creating spaces for sharing have shaped who Faith in Place is as an organization and how we connect and heal with our community. I'm Isioma Odom, Energy and Climate Change Coordinator. I'm Princess Harris, the Sustainable Food and Land Use Coordinator. Stories have always been a foundational part of Faith in Places programming. We have hosted story circles for years, connecting people and learning where they are from and what they have experienced. We have seen the healing power of listening, which makes space for the experience of others, offering their story dignity and respect. Now through group stories, conversations, and discussions, I help people process feelings and issues about sensitive topics like racism. I help them better understand themselves and others, and ultimately, I help them heal. This year, I worked with Veronica Cow to start a new storytelling tradition through our Porch Story series. As Trudadere Harris describes in her book, The Power of the Porch, Porch Stories were born in the heat of the South. In the absence of television and air conditioning, my relatives and neighbors routinely gathered on porches. Those sites became the primary stages for interactive storytelling, for the passing on and receiving of oral tradition. Bringing this oral tradition to our own community, we filmed people sharing stories and connecting on their front porch. So one day, one of the boys came and threw a sna snake onto the blanket where the tea, tea was and the cookies and stole all the cookies and of course we all ran. But that's, you know, those are the fond memories that I have of being outdoors on the porch and it was just really nice. This brought me back to my own childhood and the importance of porches. When I was young, we knew everyone in the neighborhood. You didn't let someone walk past without saying something to them. Now, I really appreciate that connection. I believe when you know your neighbors, you are less likely to do harm to them. In our city, where violence affects so many of us daily, these community connections have important healing power. Because we all have our porches, we know each other because we sit on our porches, we wave and say good morning, how you doing? And people actually get a chance to say how they're actually doing yeah. instead of just saying how you're doing, yeah. We can make a lot of assumptions about other people, but when you know someone's story, you realize they aren't so different from you. And differences that seem so significant begin to fade. There's so much power when individuals share stories in our healing circles. Participating really opens your eyes to other people's experiences. I believe when you know your neighbors, you are less likely to do harm to them. I've learned that you might not be able to change the whole world, but if you can't impact one person, then you can impact the next. I hope our tradition of telling stories continues on our porches, bringing healing for generations to come. Together, our healing work, our listening and sharing is making a difference is changing our world.
I have the honor of being the person who first hired Veronica to come to work for Faith in Place. Veronica is a rock star, in a word, and is so passionate about living within the means of the earth and living with a great love for creation and with a great love for her people. And she taught me all of that. She's wonderful. And I know she believes in what she represents and how she's represented Faith in Place. And she certainly encouraged me to be all the more passionate about the environment. I just, I just found her immensely profound all the time and like absorbed it all. Uh, she, she dubbed us the Thelma and Louise friends. And we certainly had many of those moments. She shared great ideas. She shared her grace and love and called out questions and issues of concern that we could discuss together. And it's resulted in me being a better friend to many people and me being more committed to the earth and social justice. And I found that we had something in common. We want to save the planet. We are environmentally conscious. And I also realized that this woman is educated and knowledgeable. Yeah, Veronica is a true force of nature. She is a unique human being. She showed me the way, and it turned out that working with her in, in every dimension widened into my view and gave me a chance to reach out and go forward farther, faster than I'd imagined. She puts me in the mind of a great Sunday news read. Um, she has those hard-hitting uh, headlines, human interest stories, a little competition in the sports section, interactive with the crossword puzzle, and also love to see those comics. One word that describes Veronica, she's awesome. I would have to say manifester. She would just say a thing and then have it come into being. The word was vivacious in all things. Fabulous. So one word that describes Veronica to me would be giving. The word that comes to describe Veronica is another V word, vivacious. Rock star, wonderful, force of nature, manifester, fabulous, vivacious, awesome. Melanie Campbell coming through with the great metaphor, a great Sunday news read. Go ahead and put your word to describe your interactions with Veronica over the years in the chat as we continue to celebrate Veronica and all that she has given to Faith in Place. And thank you to all of you who provided those tributes. As mentioned earlier in the program, we are excited tonight to officially launch the Veronica Kyle Equal Ambassador Scholarship Fund. This means that 10% of all non-pledged donations made this evening will go into seeding this fund, which will be used by our team to support the tuition and academic cost of our youth program participants who are inspired by the great programming that we do here at Faith in Place to go off and study environmental sciences in college. Your support makes that happen. And tonight, we're gonna to make those scholarships happen through a tithe. 10% of all the donations that you give tonight will go to seed this fund to make it a reality. The legacy of your gift tonight will truly leave a lasting impact. Now to tell you more about financially supporting Faith in Place, I'd like to welcome at this time, Rand Sparling, a former board member of Faith in Place. Rand is one of my first calls when I have a strategy question on which way to go, and a longtime member of Faith in Place's Founder Circle to tell you more about ways to invest in Faith in Place's mission. Rand? Good evening. It's wonderful to see so many happy faces. As many of you, I have supported Faith in Place and its work for several years. Tonight, I'd like to explain briefly why. The biggest reasons are co-founder Claire Butterfield, Veronica Kyle, and the Reverend Brian Souter. Claire took me to lunch, recruiting me to a new board as a new board member. Claire was and is amazingly persuasive. From my initial contact with Veronica, she entranced me with her passion, energy, and joy of life. Brian showed me his way, and it was clear it would be amazing. We have many reasons to be confident our faith in place will survive, prosper, and change the shape of our environmental work. The best reasons to believe in the future of faith in place are the amazing people within it. 
the staff Brian has gathered around him and the exceptional individuals who serve on our board of directors. Face in Place is about building community at a time when our social fabric has never been more tattered and torn in an age that celebrates competition. Face in Place promotes cooperation. It brings together people of all ages, faiths, and races while turning its back on our alarming and destructive political divisions. There is a simple truth that faith in place offers people who support it, offers all of us opportunities to raise ourselves up to become better people. It is my privilege tonight to ask you to make a financial investment to support Faith in Place's day-to-day -day operations. As you know, this is not just an investment in Faith in Place. It is an investment in our own futures and the future of all Earth's inhabitants. I have supported Faith in Place for over 10 years. As a past board member and treasurer, I've witnessed the amazing growth and maturation of the organization. The central reason I support Faith in Place is its unique capacity to create positive environmental change framed within and energized by communities of faith. This evening, we have several ways to financially support Faith in Place. First, thank you to our faith healers who already donated to this event. Now, please go to the link in the chat or on screen that leads to a page which outlines some of the ways to support Faith in Place. The Founders Circle supports the unrestricted operating funds of Faith in Place, which are crucial to our success. All Founders Circle pledges are for five years with the donation made each year. I am an original Founders, Founders Circle member. Because of my passion for Faith in Place, I am renewing my pledge and making another five-year commitment at $1,000 a year for the third time. I ask you to consider also joining the Founders Circle. Healthy Soil is a pledge of $1,000 per year, approximately $83 a month. Your gift will, for example, enable us to provide staff support to community supported agricultural farms across the state. The next giving level, our fresh water level, is a pledge of $5,000 per year. A gift like this allows us to install rain barrels, build rain gardens, and protect the drinking water we share. The third level, clean air, is a pledge of $10,000 per year. With this pledge, Faith in Place provides coaching for green teams, ensures all families have access to nature, and trains hundreds of faithful citizens to support environmental justice. If you are joining me today as a member of the Founders Circle, my personal thanks for your generous support. It is more fun if we all do it together. We know and appreciate that you may prefer to give at a different level, and you can do that at the link provided in the chat and on screen now. Plus, as Brian mentioned, 10% of non-pledge gifts donated today will support the Veronica Kyle Echo Ambassador Scholarship Fund. Please stop and take a moment to make a donation now. All donations at every level are recognized in our annual report. We sincerely appreciate whatever support you give, including the gift of your time to be with us this evening. And now here's Valerie Scarbeck with more information. Thank you, Rand. Wow, a three-time Founder Circle pledging member. That may be a record. I'd have to check with Ginny and finance. I'll do that later. Thank you so much for not only sharing your treasure, Rand, but also your time and your talent through the years. 
We graciously, we graciously appreciate any and every gift that all of you can contribute to our mission. It means so much. And if you give before midnight tonight, 10% of any non-pledged gift will support the brand new Veronica Kyle Eco Ambassador Scholarship Fund. Speaking of Veronica, as my tribute to her, I am wearing big and bold earrings and some funky glasses, which you'll see in a second. These are a few of her trademark styles, which symbolize what Veronica always says. Embrace your power and always be you. Please take a moment to give a gift to support all the programs you've heard about tonight, which were created by Veronica. As Rand mentioned, there are multiple ways to give and a link to our donation page is on screen and in the chat. Please consider pledging as a Founder Circle member, giving at a $500 Fellowship Circle level, or making a monthly or a one-time gift. You can even send a good old fashioned check to the address that's listed on our website. Faith in Place can continue to blaze a trail in the environmental movement and fight environmental justice with your support. Thank you so much for your support. Soon, we will hear from the lady of the hour, Veronica Kyle. But first, we have another surprise. I am so excited to introduce Reverend Dr. Ozzie E. Smith Jr., Pastor Emeritus at Veronica's House of Worship, Covenant United Church of Christ. Take us away, Reverend Ozzie. Good evening and to all of you at Faith in Place and particularly Reverend Veronica and Reverend William. Uh, just a few words. I've been here in Chicago now 31 years. My, my wife, my late wife and family moved here uh, 1990 to attend seminary. And that was quite a leap of faith for us. But one of the things that really struck me was I went to uh, a church called Avalon Park Community Church and they were sending a couple off to Kingston, Jamaica to do a church. And it was Reverend Veronica and, and Reverend William was starting a church. And I said, my, 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 we just moved from Memphis and they're moving all the way to Kingston, Jamaica. Reverend Veronica, you don't know how you and Reverend William touched, that touched me that day to say, wow, you know, when we think we're doing something, somebody else is doing so much. And then you went from there to South Africa. And so I want to congratulate you and thank you for your faithfulness. Uh, the, both of you, your faithfulness as a husband and wife to go to another place across the waters to do what you've done. And uh, the, the hymn of the church, the great hymn of the church that I want to share with you tonight is great is thy faithfulness. Of course, we're talking about God, but if it had not been for God, your faith would not be as it was. And I wanna thank you for planting that green team at our church, because we went from plastic bottles to boxed water and it changed the whole flavor and approach of our church towards this environment. Great is thy faithfulness.
Reverend Ozzy. Come on, everybody. Give it up for Reverend Ozzy and sharing that tribute to Veronica with us. What an amazing, I see in the chat, beautiful tears of joy. Amen. Well, without further ado, Veronica Kyle, I invite you up to the stage to close out our evening together tonight. Veronica, the floor is yours. Veronica, we got you on mute. We got to get you unmuted. Wow, wow, wow. You know, I'm a crybaby. I'm beyond words. So that's amazing. First of all, Reverend Ozzy, what a blessing. Ooh, wait, I, I am writing in my journal tonight. Reverend Ozzy serenaded me. That is amazing. I'm so touched. I'm touched by this whole hour. Um, I never came to Faith in Place for a job. As Reverend Ozzy said, I had a job. I actually convinced my wonderful partner, life partner, uh, William, to um, not go back, for us not to return to South Africa for another four year, wonderful term, wonderful life in South Africa. But I felt this calling when I met Claire that fateful day at Navy Pier at a green event. And don't let Claire take you to lunch. Rand talked about that lunch, Brian. She takes you to lunch, you're hooked. But it was the best hook I've ever had to go on because I truly have felt these 13 years to be a calling. And the reason I say that is there was never a time, even in the most challenging moments at Faith and Place, and there were some, um, I've journeyed through, um, meeting awesome Claire and seeing her transition and go on to do things that she was called to do. Um, being the only one left um, doing that interim. And then uh, Henrietta Saunders, Hank, as we affectionately call her, stepped in for eight months. And it was a challenging time and she was amazing. I met, you know, got closer to people like Ran and Ann White and so many others that were there to support. I was literally, the last one standing. Um, I left my, lost my partner, Roz had gone on that we were Thelma and Louise of grant writing. Only thing is we didn't jump off the cliff. We felt like it a couple of nights, midnights, running to take proposals and deadlines. And then Brian came. I learned so much from all three of those in leadership. And I chose to stay in my position because I felt called to be on the ground with the people. And I just want to thank all of you, every last one of you on this Zoom, family, friends, and staff board. And even those who don't know me but have supported Faith in Place because of other staff and because of your own calling about the environment. I know that what we do and what we continue to do at Faith in Place matters. And nothing matters more than investing in our youth. They are creative, innovative, fearless. They are some of the most dedicated. These youth got up on Saturday mornings. They show up on, during the summer, year round, very often leaving very um, challenging communities to come together and learn about their common home and what they can do to save it. We have got to invest in our youth. One in five people living in this country are under the age of 18. That means 75 million perhaps. So just imagine if we don't get this right, we don't allow those young people to bring their brilliance, their courage, continue to be on the front line of innovation for climate justice, environmental justice, community change. And I'm not just talking about the trees and the water and the air. Yes, we can't live without that. But many of them, they're built environments where they live every day. They're about change. So when I say environmental justice, I'm talking about the human environment, the built environment, the natural habitat of our environment and our young people get it. They understand that. 
we have got to invest in them. And I am honored to have a scholarship named after this little Anniston, Alabama, used to be in the 50s color girl, and now a bold, black, unapologetic, eco-womanist I am. And like Fannie Lou Hamer, part of what I need to say tonight is that we all need to do our part because sometimes I get sick and tired of being sick and tired, but it's those young people that keep me motivated. When I saw them, when I see them, when I saw them on the screen, see them on the street, I go, that's our future. And if we don't invest in them, and I'm gonna say this, Brian gonna say, here she go. They said 10%. So give generously so your 10%. And if you don't have it tonight, come back and say, this is for the youth program. I feel so blessed that all these programs that they talk about, I created or inspired, that was because of a level of creative freedom and trust from Claire to all the other leaders and to the board. We have to do that for our young people, trust them believe in them, invest in them. I thank you for tonight, but I thank you for what you're gonna do for the future of Faith in Place. And if you're doing it for the future, that means you're also investing in the youth. And with that, I wanna close by saying, change comes when we all invest in it. We can talk about it, we can complain about it, but we must invest our time, our talents, our resources. Otherwise we don't get change. It comes when we invest in it. And I feel like everyone on this Zoom tonight is already an investor or she wouldn't be here. But let's continue to do that. Let's talk about this at our dinner tables. I call them kitchen table talks. We've got to talk about this stuff. We've got to be, re, remember that we're in trouble. We don't even have the time that we had 13 years ago. Our climate is in trouble. I was on a call today with climate advocates in Oregon. Only little chocolate face at the table, no surprise there. And they are fighting the same issues we are in rural Oregon and in other places. We're not alone. We have got to invest in the change. And I just want to close by saying, continue to be an environmental investor in justice. Invest. Thank you, Brian. Thank you for the team for this creative evening. And I want to turn this back over to the fabulous, fun, play my funky Mar Marvin Gaye music, DJ Antonio Caesar. Hey, everyone, let's give it up for Veronica. Let's put our hands together. Get the chat going. I just want to ask everybody, let's just stay on for one more minute. We're going to play one song for Veronica. And just one reminder, I love it. She said we are environmental investors. So thank you so much for putting that term in my vocabulary and our vernacular. We are all environmental investors here. Please hit the donate button and stay for this one last song before we all go. Thank you.